Hi, Steve Adubato. Welcome to the Tisch WNET studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce uh, someone people know. Everybody knows you. Uh, Bethany Frankel. Uh, I'll say this. It says cast member to Bravo's TV hit series, The Real Housewives of New York City, and also the CEO and founder of Skinny Girl. That's a heck of a brand. It's an amazing brand. It's really exciting. It's, got, it's definitely got legs. Describe the brand. Uh, it started out as a, a low-calorie margarita. I was the first person to ever create a low-calorie cocktail marketed to women in a, in a world that is run by men and marketed to men. And it was pretty disruptive, and it was definitely a game-changer. And there was a time when it was the uh, fastest-growing cocktail in history. Uh, and so it's been amazing, but I've turned it into not only the margarita, it's turned into everything in practical solutions for women from wines, vodkas, nutritional bars, protein Look at shakes. Look at that shot. That's like, what don't you have? Microwave popcorn. <laughs> I mean, microwave popcorn, non-alcoholic beverages, sweeteners, salad dressings, candy coming, coffee coming. But it's, uh, it's spaces that I see holes where there's, a, there's a something to solve, a problem to solve. And I think that it's very simple. It's straightforward. You know what you're getting. The taste is always amazing. I'm completely involved. Most people think that I sold the company. It is my Skinny Girl is my brand. Uh, it's my baby. They're all my babies. And uh, you're it's, a micromanager. It's uh, yeah, uh, to a degree. To a degree. How far? Um, you know, I have so many different amazing partners. I'm partners with ConAgra in the microwave popcorn in Arizona in the non-alcoholic beverages. And I don't mm. tell them how to do their business. It just has to taste the way that I want it to taste. And the package has to be the way that I want it to be. And the brand has to be disruptive and engaging and irreverent and represent. That's you. It is. And it you works. You are the brand. Well, I named it Skinny Girl and not Bethany intentionally because I don't want it to be the Bethany brand. There are many people who know about this brand that don't know who I am, which is good. I, you, the whole brand should not fall on me, rely on me, and be all about me. As it turns out, it ends up being great now because people do think of me when they think of the brand, and I am still very much tied to it. But there will be a day mm. that people will just not even know who I am and, and know the you brand. Think so? I'm curious Maybe. about this because I, I wrote a book a few years ago called You Are the Brand. That's why I said it that way. I was just trying to plug the book. Uh, in all seriousness, what do you think the biggest mistake people make when they're trying to build a brand? Because you just said you didn't want the brand to be you, and I'm surprised at that. I think that people don't adhere to the line. I think that they there's a slippery slope. And if you have something successful, you know, big shiny objects come in and people want you to do different things. And it happens to me every day. You know, this, this partner wants to come in and they want to do this. And I say, well, wait, that's not really part of the original brand proposition. But while well, the partner, for example, Skinny Girl Sparklers, which I love, my non-alcoholic beverage, I originally wanted a non-sparkling drink or the natural energy drink that we're coming out with. But the partner saw a space in the sparkling beverage. And they know that's where I won't micromanage them. They know where there was a space. But I said, OK, but... Next, I want a natural energy drink. So you have to kind of be able to bob and weave. And But if they had said, we want to do a, a bacon drink, I would say no, because it has nothing to do with a better for you brand. And I mean, that's a ridiculous example. But you can't just go for the shiny objects. And uh, seriously, 99% of mm. celebrities just put their name on something, and they're not invested and involved. You know, I, I, I believe I saw you do this. I, I actually know more about the <clears throat> Real Housewives series than I'd like to admit. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you're married, so if it's to a woman, then I assume that she Well, that's also because I'm a scholar of media. You don't oh. realize that. Um, I, it's what I do. It's, that's my way of explaining things. <laughs> so I'm watching you give advice to, who was it? Because you're in a meeting. She forced you to come Sonia. to a meeting. So you knew right away. The, yes. And you were like, and you were, she was saying, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to have 18 different products. And you started to ask a series of what I thought were quite strategic and smart questions about how one thing was connected to the next. And I think you were about to pull your hair out. I was, because what happens a lot on reality television and with Housewives in particular is people think that it's easy. They look at someone who is successful. Oh, I thought of an idea. And then all of a sudden, it was just you know the fastest growing liquor brand in history. Like that was, I worked like a dog. I would have probably been successful without the television show, not as quickly. But I mean, I am so involved and so invested. And I see so many people come in here and they're not even working. They're out drunk every night and they come in and they get some partner who's some dumb partner to invest money in someone just because they're on television. Mm. Bravo is such a savvy audience. And in general, television watchers are so smart and they feel it and they taste it. And she had a toaster and she was a cabriolet dancer and she had an event 
business. That, the person who's you don't see the connections. <laughs> it does, the person who I'm is sorry. successful has an idea and is so you know Focused. a dog on a bone yes. and figures out find your way in. If that doesn't work, find another Where's way. Where's the in. synergy? Yeah, anyway, there's I'm no. Sorry. So it, I'm so sorry. that's waste. No, yeah, go. I was watching that going. Eh. But that's just an example. It's just it's a waste of my time. And now what happens is yeah. I want to help women. I want. I mean, I work with Dress for Success. Yeah. That's the, my chosen charity about you know uh, creating awareness for women who can't help themselves. And I even want to get more involved with them because we get busy and don't do enough. But I want to help business women, aspiring entrepreneurs. Women are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs out there. So for people to come in and just think they're going to stamp their name on something mm. and be cute and fakely utilize television to promote brands, I'm not down with that. So I don't have those conversations. You know, because you're so savvy and because you understand business and have been so successful, I am really curious about this part of it. When I heard you were coming back, and as we do this program around the holidays of 2015, I was asking Bethany before, she's not saying or she doesn't know or she's just not telling us whether she's coming back. So that's your business. That's Bravo's business. That's probably, and, and Andy Cohen sat in this chair a while back, and, and there are very few people who are more savvy uh, in the media business than Andy Cohen. So whatever the deal is, that's between you and Andy Cohen and Bravo. But that's not the issue. The fact that you came back, what I'm fascinated by, is someone who is smart as you are, I'm sitting there going, did Bethany des decide strategically that it was the right business decision for you to come back? Because as I'm watching, I'm going, She's in some interesting situations in which emotionally you were put out there. And then you were really out there. And I go, she's not acting. She's, a, she's being herself. And I go, why? What a circuitous route. I'm right. saying why. No, I'm going to explain to you. So I can even explain the thought process. When Andy Cohen came to my house last summer to say, come back, and I had thought of doing something else, I got really turned off. And I wanted to kind of just not even maybe be known anymore, maybe not be on television anymore. And when I decided to come back, First, I, this wasn't in any order, but I thought I wanted to be on my terms. If I fade away, Excuse I me, want. Excuse me, you had already the talk show. You did that, got a nice I'm run. Out. I'm out. You and said I, you were relieved. I was. Good. So oh, go well, ahead. Well, that I was totally relieved. Fine. That's a different this, conversation. You, that's done. Right. Now you're here. Andy right. visits. Go ahead. I'm oh, well, sorry. by the way, actually, I'll, let me just walk with where you just took me. The talk show was about orchestration and directing traffic, and you have an agenda, and you have to do this, and you have it's to be you. pulled, and I need to be free. So I really, going away from it, realized how free this, this vehicle was. Yes, I, I think it is therapeutic to kind of go through things. Do I always want to go through my personal life with a group of women and with America? Not necessarily, but it was liberating to be able to be funny. I mean, I think the show is ultimately a comedy and I missed the connection of me and the audience. Even though it was my own talk show every day, it wasn't a real connection because I had so many things I had to do and integrations I had to plug and guests I had to announce and people I had to say up when we come back and and not being able to be myself, not being able to curse. I mean, just not being able to be free. So I miss that freedom and the connection. And it's an incredible, truthful vehicle for my business. It's just, this is the reason I'm in business is to connect with women and through my products and my ideas. And I, I mean, this protein shake is exactly how I wanted it to taste and has exactly the number of calories that I wanted to be in there. And so the show is such a great ve vehicle to communicate that. I mean, it's what I'm really doing. We really talk about my business. It's not me just being like, hi, hi, tonight we're here. You know, it's not, not like you. that. No. So we just talk about how hard business is. So if I have a yeah. conversation with Sonia, I can explain to the people at home how hard business is. And I want you to be really passionate if you get into business. And I want you to do well. I don't want you to have false hopes. I, you know, all of that makes sense to me. But there were times where I will tell you the dysfunction among the women. And, and uh, Heather was here. Um, what's Heather's last name, guys? Thompson. Oh, yeah. Heather Thompson, who's also a smart businesswoman, but I was like, she's arguing and fighting and stuff that I thought to myself, no, that's not healthy, it's not normal, and families argue and friends argue, but some of it, I couldn't figure out what was contrived, I could not figure out to what degree producers wanted it, and, and, and it's look. It's not, it's escalated. What it is, is it's not conversations that you would have, in your life with the people you work with and on the street you walk by, you don't just tell everybody what you feel. No, that's But true. if you were in a situation where you were with people that you're not always with, seven people at a dinner table, and you knew that somebody was telling you how proper they are, and you knew that in, you know, when you went out <laughs> with them last night, they weren't proper at all. If you were in a pressure cooker, you would say, yes. what do you mean, you're not proper at all. You're being, right. you're fronting. So the reason that I'm, I, I'm pretty, as Andy would say, good at being a housewife is that I really don't have skeletons. What you want to know no, anything, I'll tell there. you. 
I never, I've never said to an interviewer in my entire life, uh, you can't say this, you can't ask me about that, you could ask me anything. So I'm... You enjoy it. Okay. For, um, I don't always enjoy it because... On balance. I'm too obsessed. I'm very obsessive, so I don't always enjoy it because I also, I like people to be accountable. I can't BS on it. So it's not that enjoyable to me when things like that happen, when I go to a meeting with Sonia, because I feel the need to have to be totally honest about it. So here I am, people at home might be like, why were you so rude to her? Why? Because she invited me into a ridiculous manufactured meeting with a bunch of actors pretending that something was going on. So I'm going to tell her that. Because you're a business person. Right, but I don't walk right. around my life telling everybody what I think all um, the time. Let me do this, because I also respect boundaries. Do you mind if I ask you about how great it is to be a mom? No, no. That's Your daughter's the, how old now? She's five. What do you, like, look at that smile. She's the um, best. All this is nonsense. It doesn't matter because <laughs> it's all about getting back to my daughter, about being with her, about, that's the priority. So the rest of it just, it, this seems like kind of like a, a Greek tragedy or a comedy. It's just, it's sort of funny because I have my priorities straight. So my yeah. daughter's my number one priority and nothing else can really get me down or really bother me because she's healthy and she's amazing and she loves me and I'm so, I'm so blessed. So be, it's the best, it's the best age because yeah. they're people and you know, your friend and it's really sweet. I got other ages too, 13, 11 and 23, how's that? You have four kids? Yeah, all right, come on. Wow. I have two marriages. Oh, okay, so two and two or three and one? What, marriages or kids? Kids. Three from one and one from one another? One from the first and three from the second. Oh, well, okay, perfect. Okay. Wow. We're not, we don't talk about marriages. I don't talk about my first. Oh, okay. Okay. I have limits. Start um, a marriage. Good. Okay. 30 seconds before I let you out. How okay. much do you love your life right now? I like my life. I'm a little lonely sometimes, but I like my life. I mean, I'm, I'm very, it's work and my daughter, so I don't really have that much of a social life in between, which I have to work on a little bit. You know nobody's buying it. No, 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 okay. it's true. I, I go out, but I... It's not a priority. I'm not really into dating. So I kind of, am, you know, spend a lot of time with my dog or my daughter or working. It's the truth. You've been a great guest. And thank I want to you. thank you for coming in. Thank you. And I know our studio is cold. Thank you. It's gotten warmer. Well, we did that on purpose. Thank you. Enough I thought it was the question. about it. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank and you. I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, if you do come back, we'll enjoy it. Another season uh, on Bravo. It's Real Housewives of New York. And wish you all the best with... Uh, Skinny girl. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. We, we don't awesome. plug on PBS. I'm sorry. You don't? No, you just we did. don't. We, I, I did. Cut that out. Oh, no. We, we stay there. Oh, We're okay. right back right after this. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Oscar Health Insurance, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Johnson & Johnson, Valley National Bank, NJM, The Fidelco Group, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.